Motorcyclists killed in St. Croix County. Flooding causing problems around the Sheboygan Riverfront. Kohler Best Buy reopens after March fire. These and other stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister and welcome to Community News Review for Monday, July 8th, 2019. An investigation is underway after an apartment fire in Sheboygan this morning. It started around 3.30 at the Lakeview Village Apartments located in the 3400 block North 10th Street. No injuries were reported, but the fire did leave several residents displaced. The Red Cross has been called to, in to assist, and the cause is unknown at this time. Flooding is causing major problems for some businesses here in Sheboygan. According to some officials, the water levels across the Great Lakes will likely break records this summer. They say that this is causing a ripple effect on flooding and erosion for certain areas. The popular Sheboygan Riverfront, which is known for its views of Lake Michigan, is perhaps having some of the biggest issues. Some business owners say they are constantly looking at the wind direction and keeping an eye on the storms. Other business owners say water levels have already washed in. According to a recent report in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, said water levels have continued to surge across the Great Lakes likely setting new records. One business owner said that the city had, has helped by bringing sandbags in to stop the water at his store. He said the water can rise in minutes and flood the boardwalk. The Best Buy in Kohler is back open. They officially reopened on Saturday after being closed since March due to a fire. The store located at the 3600th County A was heavily damaged by a fire back in March 13th. No one was injured, but the fire took several local fire departments and several hours to extinguish. A company spokesman said that the cause was electrical, but the full amount of damage was never disclosed. The place has now been partially remodeled with things like fresh paint and new carpet. Best Buy is located in the Deer Trace Shopping Center. A motorcyclist has died after being hit by a driver. Authorities say a suspected car thief in an SUV that was being pursued by sheriff's deputies tr struck and killed a motorcyclist in western Wisconsin. The St. Croix County Sheriff's Office says that the pursuit started after 4 o'clock p.m. on Saturday after a caller reported a 2013 Jeep Liberty was taken from Star Prairie Township without permission by someone under no contact order. Deputies attempted to stop the Jeep north of New Richmond, but the driver, 37-year-old Brandon Lifery, refused to pull over. During that chase, the driver attempted to pass several vehicles in the village of De Deer Park and struck one of the group of motorcyclists making a left turn. The Jeep driver fled on foot but was caught after a short pursuit, and the motorcyclist identified as 39-year-old Dustin Calland of Stillwater, Minnesota, died at the scene. A teen was hit by a car on Friday night in Wapaka County. According to officials on Friday, July 5th at about 9.05 p.m., the Wapaka County Sheriff's Office received calls regarding a vehicle hitting a pedestrian on County Highway E at the Spencer Lake Camp in the town of Lind. A 14-year-old girl from Nilesville was crossing from west side of County Highway E to the east side. Spencer Lake Camp is on both sides of County Highway E where she was hit. It is assumed that she was trying to get to the other side of the camp when a northbound pickup truck driven by a 19-year-old woman from Berlin collided with the crossing pedestrian. 
Wapaka County Sheriff's Office, Wisconsin State Patrol, Wapaka Area First Responders, Gold Cross Ambulance, Wapaka Fire Department, and Theta Star Medical Helicopter all responded to the scene. The teenager was transported by helicopter to Theta Care Medical Center of Nina. Her condition has not been released and no other details have been released on, at this time as the Wapaka County Sheriff's Office is continuing to investigate the crash. The Wisconsin State Patrol is also completing a crash reconstruction of the incident and is assisting with the investigation. A lobbyist for public schools is pleased with the funding increase for K-12 education in the new state budget. In signing the budget bill last week, Governor Tony Evers used his line item veto to add $87 million more in the per pupil aid over the next two years. Dan Ross Miller with the Wisconsin Association of School Boards had sent out a tweet saying it's 100% state dollars. There is no local property tax increase. Ross Miller said there is totally no strings attached. A district can use that money for whatever it determines its priorities are. Governor Evers calls the new budget only a down payment on what needs to happen in the next state budget. He proposed a $1 billion state funding increase, and it was reduced to $500 million by the GOP-controlled legislature. And finally, we have not heard the end of opposition to gerrymandering in Wisconsin. The only path to challenging voting boundaries is at the state level after a U.S. Supreme Court ruling last week. Matt Rothschild with the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign notes that the most recent Marquette poll shows strong opposition to partisan-drawn legislative districts. That includes 63% of Republicans and 76% of independents. No matter how gerrymandered the districts are now, even conservative lawmakers are going to have to come around to ban gerrymandering. His comments came on WKOW-TV's Capital City on Sunday. The Supreme Court recently upheld highly partisan state election maps in North Carolina and New Jersey, ruling that the issues cannot be resolved in federal court. The ruling says states can still determine how voting boundaries are drawn, either by judges, independent commissions, or lawmakers. Under Wisconsin's state constitution, the legislature draws the district lines. And that is all we have for today. Join me again on Wednesday for another recap of our local news and stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation WSCS-TV.